The reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. Please rise for the Gospel. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You are already, you have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. Imbide in me as I imbide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. If you cannot, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that you may joy me, joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that my father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Vines and branches. I wasn't really creative with my sermon title this weekend. Vines and branches. What are you going to say about vines and branches? Well, I got to thinking about this this week, and one of the things that I love is when Jesus uses gardening metaphors, because uh, my wife and I, were huge gardeners. We love to garden. We have uh, a big garden plot where we're living now, back when we were living uh, just across the highway here uh, in one of these new developments. We had a, a pretty big patch of garden there, too, although that garden was pretty dismal because, you know, one of the things they do in these new developments, they come and take off all the topsoil, and then you're left with clay to plant in, right? So, We don't really have good soil over there, but where we are now, we do. And so we're just sort of itching to get into the garden right now. Uh, But we know that we're going to have nights like last night where it's going to get down to like 18 degrees. And if you plant anything, it's just not going to work, right? So we've got to wait a few weeks to make sure that there isn't any chance of a late and hard frost. But uh, we love to garden. It's just a a real uh, amazing thing to watch something you plant grow into something incredible, right? And one of the things we love is that whole process of taking that tiny little seed, and you you would never know unless you're really kind of an astute gardener looking at a seed, what sort of plant is going to grow out of that uh, little tiny seed. But some of the most amazing things come out of these little specks of life, right? <clears throat> these little specks of life so often for us produce abundant joy. I mean, we get to see something spring forth out of the ground and come to life and watch it grow. And so gardening, as I was thinking about it, is this process, right? 
It's this process of tending to life and watching it grow. So in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus uses a metaphor of vines and branches and fruit, a garden, really, to talk about the process of God tending to our lives and God watching us grow, too. I've often assumed that the vine that Jesus is talking about is a grapevine, wouldn't you? I mean, think about it. Uh, Last time Jesus talked about something uh, like this was when he talked about bread. A few weeks ago, Pastor Amy preached an excellent sermon on Jesus being the bread of life, right? And now Jesus says, so back then he said, I am the bread of life. And now he says, I am the vine. So Jesus must be talking about a grapevine because what comes from grapes but wine? And if Jesus is talking about bread, he must be talking about wine. And he must be talking about communion, right? His last supper with disciples. He's got to be talking about grapevines. But there are lots of vines in the gardening world. My friend Phil, for example, right? Phil is a vine. There are other vines too. Tomatoes are a vine. A few weeks ago, I can't remember if it was on the weekend or a a Wednesday night, but I used a sermon illustration about my favorite tomato vines that we grow in our garden. There are other kinds of vines. Peas are a vine, if you didn't know. Melons and cucumbers are vines. And don't forget about all the beautiful flowers that are viney flowers, right? So I've always wanted to know, just what kind of vine is Jesus talking about here? Maybe it doesn't even really matter. I mean, it probably is a grapevine, but... The thing with metaphors is that it's not really the thing that you're talking about that matters, right? The thing with metaphors is that it's not really about the vines or the branches or the fruit. It's really the meaning behind those things that matters. And so what's the meaning behind vines and branches? in Jesus' story today. Well, he's talking about God. And he's talking about his relationship with God. And he's talking about our relationship with God. And he's talking about our relationship with him. And he's not talking about vines and branches and fruit. He's not talking about grapes or tomatoes or even cucumbers. He's talking about what it means for us to live in relationship with him. It's our connection to Jesus that matters for this morning. It's your relationship with Christ that matters. That's what he wants you to hear when he uses this metaphor. It's his connection to God the Father, and it's your connection to him And it's their connection to one another that's really at the heart of what Jesus is talking about today. So Jesus compares our relationship with him to a vine and branches. This gardening metaphor, it reminds us that staying connected to Jesus is really important. Staying connected to him actually matters, and without this connection, Jesus says, we wither and we die. And so as we think about this metaphor, and Jesus masterfully paints this picture with his words about the kind of life that comes from us staying connected with him, it's a good and fruitful life, right? You will produce Good fruit, Jesus says, when you remain connected to me. Just like the branches connected to the vine, right? You will produce something good 
when you're connected to him. But here's the other thing about metaphors. It's not the thing, it's not the vines and the branches and the fruit that Jesus is talking about. It's something deeper, our relationship with him and our connection to him. But it's even deeper than that. Because think about it. Jesus says, without the connection between the branches and the vine, we wither and die, but it's not like a branch could just get up and walk away from the vine, right? I mean, it's not like human beings who can just turn their backs on God and walk away. That's not the whole point of the metaphor, actually. The real point of what Jesus is saying, I think, is that the branches receive their nourishment from the vine. And living in faith and trust, the vine will produce the good things that the branches need to produce the good fruit. Let me say that again. Here's the point of the, par- of the story. This is about branches receiving their nourishment from the vine. And as they do, they live in faith and trust that the vine will produce the good things that the branches need in order to produce good fruit. The point is not necessarily the connection between the branches and the vine, but the nourishment that the vine and the branches are given by the vine grower. Jesus starts off this story by saying, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. My father, Jesus says, is the one who will give you nourishment for your life, the one who will give you everything you need for your life. So here's where it helps, I think, to know a little bit about gardening and vines. You know this probably, but vines can be prolific. This philodendron, if given the right nourishment and the right placement in the, in the light or, or not, will take over. I don't know how many times this guy has been trimmed. You can see all of the pruning that Clarus has done to this plant, right? Without a little bit of tending and care, this vine would go crazy. I can remember a couple of summers ago, uh, my wife and I, we overplanted our tomato vines. And uh, we um, unfortunately got too busy to really take care of the plants the way they needed to. And one of the interesting things about the kinds of tomatoes we plant is we plant a, a variety called an indeterminate tomato, which means instead of remaining like a small bush or something, this tomato plant actually never stops growing. It indeterminately grows and grows and grows. If you leave it unattended, it's going to wind around the trellis. And pretty soon, what we had in our garden was not a bunch of tomato plants, but a tomato jungle, right? It was just this incredible sight. You'd look out the window, and our kids would walk out there, and they'd just look up and look around, and you couldn't see anything else other than these tomato vines just sort of taking over. But the problem with this is that those tomato vines, they actually started to choke themselves out. The plant itself, it looked beautiful and lush, but the fruit, the tomatoes that we were after was sparse. There was hardly anything on it. And the stuff that was there was disease ridden and full of pests. And so these tomato vines were not producing good fruit because They didn't have a good vine grower. You need a good vine grower, a good God, who will carefully tend to your life and give you the nourishment that you need to produce good fruit. So I know a lot about tomatoes. I know very little about grapevines. Some of you are grapevine experts, I know. 
But grapevines, if you didn't know, are one of the very first plants to ever be cultivated by human beings, along with wheat. And they could uh, actually cultivate these, grape, these wild grapes in such a way that they could start to determine the, the fruit and how it would taste and ultimately how much it would produce. And the cultivation of the grapevines became this really big thing. And now we have these incredible vineyards all over the world, right? One of the oldest grapevines in the world is 400 years old. So if you fast forward a little bit to when scientists started taking a look at grapevines and they were trying to figure out the fruit inside and the chemical makeup of them and they started classifying plants into genus and species, right? Here's a little word nerd fact for you. The, the word for grape in Latin is vitus. And it's related to the Latin word vita, which means life. So great, in Latin, is re related to life. Vino, right? The wine that comes from the grape gives life, right? So it's interesting to me, when you think about vines and branches and the fruit of the grape and Jesus using probably a grapevine metaphor to talk about a good and fruitful life, Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine grower. Good fruit comes from good branches, which come from good vines, which ultimately are tended to by a good vine grower. It's not just your connection to Jesus Christ that matters. Because at the heart of all of this connection, is a vine grower carefully tending to the plant and pruning off the bad to leave the good. I wonder if we've been reading this story all wrong. So often when we read this story, we hear Jesus talking about the vine grower pruning off the bad. We assume that somehow this story is about all of those people out there, the bad ones, that God is pruning away and leaving only us, the good ones. I think that might be the wrong way to read this. What if instead we read this story to mean that this good vine grower, God, he prunes the bad parts of each of our lives and leaves the good? What if the point of the whole metaphor is really about God, who's tending to your life, who's taking a look at the things in your life that are causing you pain, the things in your life that are causing you some kind of suffering, the things in your life that are no longer serving you, no longer doing well for you, those things in your life that just sort of make you wither and die? What if? This story is about Jesus being connected to us and God, the vine grower, carefully pruning your life. I think this is why Jesus says, you did not choose me. I chose you. I appointed you, Jesus says, to go and bear good fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. It's not as if we can choose to be connected to the vine or not. We are connected to the vine in baptism. You are a child of God and you are connected to Jesus Christ. And so now the point is, the nourishment that you need is coming from God the Father. What sort of nourishment are you drawing from God these days? How is God giving you what you need for life? Do you have food to eat? Clean water to drink? 
Do you have clothes to wear? Do you have a house, a roof over your head? Do you have good friends, family? Do you have a church family? How is God nourishing your life? And then how are you drawing on that nourishment? Do you regularly spend time in prayer? Do you read the scriptures? Do you come to church? Do you serve in mission? Whatever it is, however it works, I want you to ask yourself this week, am I being nourished in faith? Is God the Father giving me what I need? And is there something I can do in my life to draw on that nourishment through Jesus Christ? And whatever you decide, know this, you are connected to God through Jesus. And God is producing good fruit in you. In the name of Jesus, amen.